Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Clark, and this is my husband, Dan Clark, and we're with X Worldwide Truth Seekers. Uh, that is my website. Uh, no, my website's actually Angela's Inspirations. Uh, um, com. So anyway, we're interviewing today uh, again for the second time. This is episode two with Sarah Ehrenholtz. And yes. so she is a former Worldwide Church of God attender. Um, Sarah began attending the Worldwide Church of God with her mother beginning at age five. She actually grew up on a farm in Iowa. And then actually, I can't believe it, but her mother drove them every week to the Sabbath in Nebraska, which is about an hour to an hour and a half away where she began attending Worldwide Church of God with her mother and again at age five. Her father never attended the church. Sarah had two older siblings who also attended. Um, they also actually got to keep Christmas and whatnot before they got stuck into this whole thing. Um, the pastor at that time was Mr. Swaggerty. Sarah is the mother of a beautiful daughter, Isabella, now an adult, currently lives in Oregon. Today, Sarah is going to focus on medical neglect, which we actually attempted to do last time, but we didn't get that far. <laughs> And uh, so it's, an, it's a medical neglect due to improper care. And Sarah will be sharing just what, what she experienced and or witnessed, and I will too, in the Worldwide Church of God. Um, again, I believe that the first step, guys, towards our healing is awareness. So awareness is key. So again, let's get going on this. Okay, welcome, Sarah, once again. Thank you for being on with thank, us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I completely agree with you, um, Angela. I think realizing that we were abused and controlled in many ways um that's really necessary before we can even begin to forgive like our parents and others like what was done to us um one thing i've really learned was i always thought forgiveness meant you were con you know that meant you were condoning the behavior and stuff that happened to you and it's really not about that no. it's uh you're for you're forgiving them so that way you can heal and let go and i really just want to say that before and um i know this has brought up a lot of emotions and by the comments i feel like it's brought up a lot of old wounds and stuff for everybody and i've really felt that um these last couple days yeah and um I appreciate everybody commenting and sharing their stories. It's really, I've really felt everybody's pain. And um, especially this one, uh, this doctrine or belief that the Worldwide Church of God had, this one was so damaging. I hope I can even like express and like how bad it was. Um, once again, you know, um, I got occasionally taken to the doctor. I was one of the lucky ones. I feel like it kind of depended on um, your parents and your certain situation, how strict this was followed. Right. Um, some were not taken at all and there were deaths um, yeah. and there were suicides uh, yeah. because you weren't allowed, you know, um, you know, mental help as well. So I'll also say if you needed a surgery for something, a lot of people would not accept that medical care and help. Um there is two um, websites that I found um, that are keeping track of like the suicide statistics and the deaths in the Worldwide Church of God. I was glad to see that. And I, it's, I believe under uh, hwarmstrong.com. And then the other one is the painfultruth.com. I believe that those are... Um, the two but you literally there's there's you know hundreds of uh deaths and suicides so this is very real well, like and it um what's go ahead was that hw dot armstrong no uh, no just hw armstrong.com and then the painful truth.com and, and those were some uh good websites that had a lot of information on that i recently okay. found I let, I've been through all through the painful truth. I printed out a lot of stuff off of there. Uh, I never yeah. had H.W. Armstrong, but, but those guys have a lot of great details about what went on, really help us to put together, especially if you've been out for a while, but put, put back together what you've forgotten. Because I don't know, I've been out already 40. I figured out yesterday, 42 years already. And you wow. Know, and even though my mom is still in there, she's probably what keeps me, 
painfully attached um, because of her guilt and shame and constant battering me for, you know, trying to make sure I don't forget, right? And so I'm reminded yeah. of every holy day, not so much anymore. She's tried to lay off of it, but she does it sneaky little ways. And um, anyway, it just kind of keeps me stuck a little bit in there. And um, I don't know, I, I just have forgotten some things, but I, you oh, know, I, I know, and I'm sure you, we still do feel stuck. We push it down, but then we mm -hmm. also try to keep up like that wall, right? From those yes. family members. So there's a lot of weird stuff that we kind yeah. of do to protect ourselves. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of people, it's like the abuse that happened, it was so severe and so bad that literally, you know, most people would be like, you should, how are you talking to them even having a relationship? I know. Um, but it's literally like, I wouldn't have family then, you know? Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> so, sir. and I think a lot of people can feel that way. Now, tell me about your parents. Did I understand that neither one of them are alive now? No, they're both alive. Mm -hmm. Um, they did end up getting divorced, but we'll, we'll get to that in the third episode, I guess. Cause that kind of goes with my we'll exit. We'll talk about um, and also, so my dad was not in it, okay. but I will say he was very old school. So you would almost think he was, you, oh. you got, you know, spanked. Um, I wasn't allowed to cry. You oh. know, I remember being uh, told to uh, be a man and I'm thinking in my head, I'm a, I'm a girl, a girl, you know, and getting whooped for crying. So um, in these last couple of years in therapy, I told her I've cried more in these last two years than I have my whole life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I really have numbed them, pushed that down oh, and yeah. really wow. tried not to. And I would really almost feel like I was getting in trouble and whooped every time I cried. I'm sure other people feel similar and they have that, uh, you know, that that happened to them as well. So, you know, we have to go back to, you know, a lot of people either grew up in this or they're brought into that. This is not our choice or, you know, we're, we're babies, we're child, we're children, we're minors. Um, so these are decisions that our parents are making for us and we don't have a say in it. Um, it, you get absorbed in it really fast. I kind of, you know, we just talked about going to church and two hour sermons, but huh. you know what you showed up before that. And then you did your lesson plans. I don't know how long you were in there for an hour. Then you did the two hour sermon. Yeah. And then I think you went and got dinner and then you went to, at least us a different building. And then we practiced for all the sports. So you didn't get home till the very end, late end of the night. And then I kind of forgot about the tournaments. You know, you'd have all the tournaments that were way out of town and you'd be gone all weekend driving. And, you know, we were poor, so we couldn't stay in hotels. So uh, people would volunteer their houses when you were in. So we'd stay in, you know, all these people's houses. It was really awkward and weird. You didn't know them, yeah, but they were part of the cult. Let's just talk about the uh, the, the tournaments. So if, if I remember, if I'm getting this right, it was the basketball tournaments that our guys were all involved in, right? Were you also yep, yep. a cheerleader too? Did you do those tournaments? I did volleyball, basketball, and cheerleading. I did all oh. three. Oh, I, I we didn't have that in our church in Denver, Colorado. We only had just basketball. We didn't. Oh, have, really? And, and then cheerleading competition. And I was a cheerleader, so I was involved in traveling with the guys and doing competition. And so that, that I didn't know about the, the volleyball and well, I didn't know. Well, and I'm sure it was a way, right. Not to feel, make us feel left out of the school activities because yeah. we couldn't go from Friday to sundown right. to Saturday. So that was sports. So right. that is why right. they gave us sports. I mean, I kind of figured it out now, but then, you know, you did right. it, but it, they kept you so busy. And so, you know, you didn't have time to think. Wow. Well, that's interesting because my husband, I, I've been helping the JWs for anybody who doesn't know that about me yet. Um, but my husband is an ex Jehovah's witness. So that's, they have the same exact thing. They keep the Jehovah's witnesses so hopping and busy, not so much now they're, they're changing things like crazy, kind of like us going to grace community and all the changes they're doing that yeah. right now. identical, what they're doing, what we, what our church went through. But they kept them so busy with meeting after meeting after meeting after thing after thing that they had to do that they had no time to take care of themselves, to think, to process, to, you know, pray, to to study something, you know, I don't know, be with family. I don't know, serve your community. Yeah, well, and, and then your parents, and you were really separated, too, from your parents a lot. They were doing their own thing, and you were doing yours. Yes. You know? 
Yeah. So um, it was just, I was just really thinking about it. And that's where I guess I really realized the strictness in other people's families when you've lived with them or, or not lived with, but yeah, stayed with them or, or you know, for those tournaments. Um, that's when I remember being like, oh, I, you know, some houses I realized I had it really lucky compared to maybe others oh, yeah. or yeah. some were even more lenient. So it went both ways. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm sure other people, you know, so I just wanted to make sure people understood that that was pretty, it was pretty up to the parents, how strict they wanted to adhere to this. Um, and another big thing is sometimes I feel like you could go and get a diagnosis, but not get treatment, which that's what happened to me a lot. Hmm. So, um, my mom, she took, we had six kids in my family and remember, uh, we got whooping, whoop, whooping, whooping cough, you know, people die from that whooping cough. And, um, we had, I remember it was, we had like a hospital room in our house where all the kids were lined up in beds. And then we're, my, I was constantly getting, you know, we, what we did is we took diapers and put them in the dryer and then we put them around their necks and to keep them oh. you know, so that they were comfortable. But, but we, we, but my mother did not take them to the doctor. And I was just going to ask you. No, no, it was horrible. It was just constant coughing and raw on their chest and my mom she tried really really hard to do the best she could you know without having doctors of any kind but uh we were i was constant nurse 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 angela constantly nursing my sisters and brothers so that they wouldn't die and um they ended up getting hearing damage and um i don't know what else um definitely hearing damage from all of yeah. that yeah, I think I'll, a lot of kids yeah. got that, you know, with that and like, or just getting something, not being taken, uh, an ear infection, yes. back to well, back, you know, all I just, that. I take, it's just of, crazy. One month of school I missed in first grade and I was going to the Ambassador College uh, Imperial Elementary School and um, I was swimming a lot. And so I was swimming at the pool. They had a pool there in Pasadena, swimming a lot. I love to go underwater and uh, somehow I got ear infection in my ears. My mother... She did the same thing with the diaper thing. And I remember she put olive oil drops in my ear, but I would scream and cry I, for a solid month. I did not go to school. I was so sick. I, I can't even believe that I survived. And I cannot believe that I still have hearing in my ears. Well, I think so perfect. many of us look back and realize that. And that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me when I started writing stuff out. I started realizing how serious this was. And how lucky I was to be alive. That is, you nailed it right there. And I think if anybody else really sat with what they went through and, 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 you know, what they experienced, they could say, oh, oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. I probably should have been taken to the doctor for that. And yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. I had lots of kidney infections. And, and so, sometimes I remember the last time I had a kidney infection when I was about 15 and a half and I was so, so sick. And my mom oh, those were so painful. And that means it was a bladder infection that turned into a kidney infection that could have been avoided Yeah, by uh, antibiotics. She had to work. She was working. I think, I don't know. She was gone a lot. So I just had to buck it up and, you know, I don't know, somehow survive. But I was able to manage to drink a lot of water. And I remember I was involved in a talent contest at my school. And so, and I was no longer in the college, the church, the churches of the world, Church of God. Now I was in public school, but I really wanted to be involved in this talent contest. So I drank so much water and wow, I managed to go. I did. I was still sick, but I, I, I boy, that yeah. helped me out yeah. real good. But my mom, she, she just is like, I don't know just forgot about me in that, that time. It was really hard. I think a lot of, I, I feel like my mom disassociated and she like, doesn't like remember, I swear a lot of it, like, you know, so she somehow kind of blocked it somewhere too. I'm sure, you know, cause we're out, there has to be some type of guilt and shame that she has too, yeah. you know, cause she knows now that she dragged her kids through a, a cult. And she has kind of gone from church to church to church. I feel like trying to 
find that same sense of belonging, but you, you're not going to find that unless you join another cult. You're not going to be the chosen yeah. one. Or <laughs> Yeah, that's me and dad's story. So, we had a pastor that said to me, me and dad, he was going to marry Dan and I, and it didn't work out because I, I didn't realize that I couldn't leave the state with my marriage certificate to get married. But anyway, he was going to get married. He was going to marry us. And I said, Pastor Dwight, I, I don't I know. We can't seem to find the right church. You know, and we've tried and tried. To, and he goes, well, okay, well, you're in Denver, Colorado. And he said, yeah, you might not find it. And I'm like, what? I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado. It's a very big city, Pastor Dwight. Well, he was in Naples, yeah. Florida. So I think he would know, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> but you know what? Dan and I, we, we didn't believe him. We kept searching anyway. And you know something? We never have found it. I, I yeah. know we've been to hundreds of churches. Uh, we're not well, gonna... for me, I would literally sometimes, it still happens occasionally, but sometimes I'll just get nausea just even driving by one. It's yeah. that yeah, I'm, not sure. I'm not even, and it's not their fault. It's not, no, and I don't blame them. It's not like that at all. No. I don't believe all churches are evil by any no, means, me neither, but I personally can't join one. <laughs> right? No, no. Yeah. Looking. yeah, we did. We stopped <laughs> yeah. Looking. We'll go sometimes to serve, like sometimes, believe it or not, Start uh, God will put it on our, our hearts to go somewhere at once in a blue moon. And yeah, we are, we're always going to like, I don't know, we're meant to be there, put it that way. There's always reasons. And we end up being yeah. just the right person for just the right reason and saying just the things that need to be said. And, you know, somehow it helps them. And and, and it reminds us that we don't ever want to be in a <laughs> church that we, we don't, we're not going to fit no matter what. We're not. No. Yeah. So. Well, I kind of re like looked up, I guess, I tried to find like, you know, about like what the doctrine was, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, and let me see if I can find it because I wrote it down and I couldn't believe it. Okay. And this one I found, I, if it's okay, if I can read it real quick and then kind of, because it really reminded me how deep and bad this was it wasn't just that you did not get taken to the doctor and i had kind of forgotten this part and this is i found it i think it's the book of healing on the hwa library.com oh so this was literally from herbert w armstrong's booklet on the book wow. of healing um what was the name of that site again hwa uh, library library.com mm -hmm. and it, it's not super long but i'm just gonna honestly i'm just gonna read the bottom uh, six sickness and disease are abnormal they are the penalty of a violation of natural laws they are physical sin i was like oh that's right so if you got sick not only did you get sick but it was something that you had done to cause that sickness so you could be this little kid and you're like, oh, God, what did I do? What did I do to cause this? Oh. And if you didn't get better, well, you just didn't have enough faith. Yes. You just didn't oh. have enough yeah. faith to heal. And you just got anointed with a cloth from the minister. If you were, you know, OK enough to go to, uh, you know, the Sabbath. And if I remember sometimes being left home alone when I shouldn't have been probably. I think my dad was there, but still, you know, and then. I should have been taken to a doctor <laughs> and then mom would come home with an anointed cloth and pray over me with that. So I'm sure lots of kids have memories of that. You know, you didn't get taken to a doctor. You got prayed right. over with an anointed cloth right. by your minister or your, or your parent. Yeah. You know, um, so I remember a time that my mother took me over to her friend's house and I was so sick and I laid down on a side hallway bench. The lady had, and I was just in such pain, ear infections really bad. And um, so my mom says, Angela, do you want me to, to have a, a minister come and anoint you? And um, I said, yeah. And before he even got there, it just disappeared. And so I remember a comment, you know, being made about, about, you know, that's how it's supposed to work with faith and all of that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm yeah, sure. Definitely. I remember that. But, but, but I, I had kind of forgotten that. I don't know if you had. Did you remember that it was like our fault too if we yes. got sick? I had like 
I just knew we, I had forgotten that. I remembered we didn't get taken, exactly. but I had forgotten. I mean, how sick is that? That's horrible. It, it is horrible. And I remember my, it even went so far as my dad having guilt over if he should accidentally have to get gas on the Sabbath day on the way home from work or um, anything at all. And then if anything went wrong whatsoever, if somebody got sick in the family or anything bad happened at all, my dad would think, God, God is punishing me because I broke the Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, that's right. Like your parents, you didn't get that nurturing and where they like felt bad for you. You, you really learned you were at the center of attention. Don't complain. You didn't get taken. It didn't really matter, you know? Um, so you really, you know, you developed a very high pain tolerance. I, I know it's the best way to put it. <laughs> you right. just, uh, you know, I feel like I've always had that and I didn't really realize where that came from till, yeah. you know, almost now, like I've had a, I have a very high pain tolerance. Well, I wonder why, you know, we couldn't sad. take a Tylenol even for a, I, that's you know, right. we couldn't. Yeah. 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 No. It's not allowed. I mean, not it had to, you had to be pretty sick. You know why I mean? why you, was that? What was it about the medicine? I mean, didn't they think like man was evolving and that he would make medicine that would help you? Or? No, he blamed it on man evolving almost in a sense and saying we should be eradicating all this disease and instead we have more disease and all this other stuff and don't trust doctors, don't, don't trust therapists. Is, is they were the demons. Doctor? What? Is there scriptures that he used? Yeah, what like absolutely. And it's all in those book on different booklets on that HW, that library one, hwalibrary.com or whatever. And it's just insane. I, I mean, it's 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 well, and I what he uses, and this is what I realized. So, like in the book of healing, he's not wrong on some stuff. So he talks about, you know, good diet and exercise and things like that. But then he uses that and twists it and says, you know, if you did all this, then you would never get sick. Well, we know that that's not true. You know, some right. of the healthiest people still fall ill. Like oh, that's yeah. just absurd. But that's literally what he said yeah, in the book. We, we have family DNA uh you know, patterning and, and it's diseases that have gone from family to family, generation after generation, naturally like heart disease and different things. So that wouldn't be your fault. It wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. But that's what they told you and taught you. And I kind of remembered now, not only was I sick, but I was just super like, almost like scared or fearful. Like, what did I do to cause this? And I'm racking my brain trying to think, but I was a good kid. So I didn't, you know, but still like that didn't help you get any sicker, right? Stress is disease too. Right. As we all know, stress causes anxiety. Stress because right. pretty much anybody that was in the cult or cult ha has anxiety now. I can almost yeah, no. guarantee that one. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, no, this is like horrible for me to even hear because it's, it's, I, I can't imagine being five years old or six years old and you feel a cold coming on. And, and as a kid, you'd be like, what do I do? You know, what do I do? And you got these parents and elders and stuff, right? Because it wouldn't matter how young you are, right? You'd still be a sinner. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And well, and the parents would be too, if they took you. Well, well, not just that. And I think a lot of times you, you wouldn't, you get, I'm sorry, you get, um, if you did go, you'd have to get permission uh, most likely from the minister that happened to me one time. Oh. So I, I, I kind of wrote out my timeline of, of stuff, you know, how I remembered, you know, um, one other big thing was there was no immunizations as well. Right, sure. Um, and I remember feeling being, cause we weren't born into it. Right. Um, we came later and I kind of remember like, I don't know. I just felt like I was uh, dirty, like, or I sinned because I was vaccinated and my brothers and sisters were too. Would I remembered that, that. Like, I really yeah, felt you that. that you have that damage on your arm. See, and we didn't have that because you, you, everybody has a scar. Uh, you, Dan doesn't have one. I don't know what happened there, but I don't think he got inoculated somehow. He had a skit. Yeah. My mom has that. I know what you're talking about. Yep. Because we, yeah, she's, uh -huh. um, and that is, uh, something I also struggled with and I didn't realize where it came from till I learned later. Oh my God. That was what I just kind of had forgotten. I think until you really sit with what we went through, you do like forget because, what happens is we all start just kind of going through the motions in survival mode. 
yeah no, and, and, and and numbing it and until i actually sat with all this i really have forgotten I so it. much i, I remembered a lot question. yeah yes, i got a crazy question if you were getting sick say you were say you were 10 and you were getting yeah. sick and your mom noticed would she ask you what sin have you committed would she be looking at you like what have you done or was no. it just you were just guilty no no I, I but it was taught it was something internal that you did i think i don't remember but that's a really great question actually and that might have happened too you know you you felt the stress though didn't you like yeah. that your parents didn't want to take you right. so Within the group, right. everybody knew the rules of the group right so my mother would feel yeah. guilty because here i know for sure my mother would feel like i failed as a mother i did not feed my kids enough healthy food so if somehow some way i failed i didn't do a good job oh. and so she had the guilt on her if we were to get sick absolutely however you know it's interesting my dad worked in the press press building very second largest press in the world in Pasadena, California that my dad worked on. And he ended up getting really deathly sick because they were not ventilating the room, the, the building, I should say, properly. And so lead was going in the air and my dad got lead poisoning. So oh he, he, he was having all kinds of bad allergies that probably was maybe all part of it that, but it was affecting his body. And uh, he, I remember he would just get home from work and just go in the room and shut the door and he wanted silence. Imagine that we had six kids and my dad, he needed desperately that, that silence because he had such a pounding headache. His body felt so bad. So he was very allergic, but that turned into the, 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 the lead poisoning. So it's probably all part of it. So then um, they, he, they finally, he had to get help from the doctor. And then the doctor said, you got lead poisoning, dude, you got it. You got to get out of Pasadena because in Pasadena, it was, it was like a bowl and all the smog kind of hangs down in the bowl. The land is like, you know, and so they said, you, you got to get out of the smog. You, you've got to move to air, clean air. Colorado would be a good place. So my dad did, he, we, he took his whole family and we moved to Colorado and lived in the mountains uh, for a while until my dad, he did get better, but he ended up working down in Denver where they had um, smog, but it was like a clear smog because they were starting to make some changes. So my dad um, eventually did fairly well recover, but never completely. Um, but they screwed my dad's health up permanently. I, I it's my opinion. <laughs> That's so sad. And, um, and he had six kids to raise. So I had to have a lot of years where my dad did not feel good. He still doesn't really feel that's super great. He's got diabetes really bad now, but that's not the church's fault. That was my family DNA history of that. But well, still, um, you missed out on a lot because I of did. that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. All uh, all the time. It was well, you know what? Thing. I guarantee you that so many people had watched their brothers and sisters or their mom and dad pass away as well, or commit suicide because they're too scared to get you know some some help mentally i i have been my whole life as well this is all really recent same with like all these surgeries like it kind of all um i think everything that happened to me it just caught up with me it's the best yeah. way to say it Wait. from my health issues um and i, I kind of timelined it out kind of how i remembered it to kind of to, to talk about but i actually first if it's okay i I wanted to talk about um, Kelly and Kelly was a girl that joined and she transferred from some uh, somewhere else. So then, you know, she just kind of joined, but she'd already been in the cold. So knew all the stuff. Right. Um, and I just remember, if you remember, you couldn't have school friends. Right. You know, totally. and so and so basically whoever was your age that went to that church or cult that's who you were able to be friend it, so it really depended on you know the kids your age that that um went so when she came she was my age so i was thrilled you know like woo new friend i was just so excited and i we hit it off best friends and you know i just remember she was just so sweet and so funny and i was really just thrilled and i would say god it was maybe six months after her going or so as I didn't seem like very long um she got cancer and 
that girl had so much faith that she was going to be healed and didn't need to get help. And she was in so much pain and she still just, just, she, I, I, I just will always remember that she was only maybe nine, eight or nine. Um, and I'll just never forget, you know, she totally believed that by having that faith that we talked about, that she would be completely healed from this. And her parents believed that as well um, and did not take her to get proper care. And, you know, she started coming and then she just looked sicker and sicker, you know, and it be- seemed to be less and less. And then eventually she didn't come. And then I'll never forget, you know, the minister um, said he had gone and visited her at her house and, you know, she still had all that faith and he'd visit her on, um, I don't know, a Thursday or a Friday. And she had said, uh, you know, I, or I'm, it must've been a Thursday. She said, I'm, or, I'm anyways, I can't remember, but she said, I'm not going to die today. I'm going to die tomorrow on the Sabbath. So I think it was oh, a geez. Friday. And I remember like, you know, it was just now thinking about it. It's just so gross. Right. She but at the time, it was like a way to make it be okay that she had so much faith. So guess what? We know where she's going. You know, she's she's okay. You know, like because we believed what if you did die before Jesus Jesus Christ came back that you would be like just sleeping. You know, so it was like she was okay. She was still saved, even though she might still be alive to this day and actually have been saved. Yeah, wow. really so you know, there's so many ladies. I mean, I've read so many stories on, uh, especially like on the um, one website, the 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 painful truth. That that website is, I think that's the one where it's got a lot of stories about people who had medical neglect and did not take care of themselves and believed that they would be healed. And that, but even if they began to feel if they wanted to go to the doctor. They would get a visit from a pastor who would come and talk them out of it and, and guilt and shame them to death. Absolutely. For thinking of doing that. And then they would die. Absolutely. Again yep. and again, there's countless stories. So I have a strange question. What is it? Did they die as martyrs? <sighs> Did they, Were they praised for their faith? Yes. While yes. They yes. Yes. Just like Kelly was. That's, that's why I wanted to start with that one because I thought it was so important that they were definitely praised for not going to doctor and getting help and die. Sarah, here's the thing is that your friend was so young. I mean, usually when kids are that young, they don't have a lot of ego or pride or anything. But what I'm feeling, what I sensed when you were saying that about the, how it ended there, I felt like the parents were coaching her and telling her that, you know, to, 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 to buck up and be, and be prideful that you're going to die on the Sabbath day. I don't, you know, I've sensed it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It had to, you're, you're so right. And that's just sickening that they sat there and watched their child in so much pain and suffering. And they could have, yeah, yeah. Though the witness, they could have at least eased your pain, even if she still didn't live, she could, they could have at least eased and, and, and given her some comfort. You know, but I guarantee you that she didn't, she might have been saying that exactly, but there's no way she felt comforted and nurtured by oh your God. parents just letting you die and not get yeah. help. You know, and knowing that I'm going to die. old enough to know that. Right. You I know, mean, don't you suppose that if she thought the thought that I'm going to die, oh, don't worry, I'm not going to die today, I'm going to die tomorrow, that she would have thought, mom, dad, if I'm going to die, can you take me to the doctor and try to save me? Like, That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking about it now is like, she knew it was that bad and knew when she, she was going to die. She could literally feel the life leaving her body. Because how else could you make a statement right. like that? How old she was? she 10 when she finally died? Like I said, she was only, it happened like almost right away after I met her. She joined. Oh. I just really, really liked her. You know, I wasn't like, I didn't get to know her as well as I wanted to. So it was a very short period. It was just like new friend, you know, uh, six months of being really good friends. And then she got sick. So it was quite fast, but it's also something that you don't ever forget. It's never, ever, ever, ever left me. Yeah. I'm, I remember in Pasadena, they had something that where my mother was able to go to, to get some natural help from, there was a commissary, which was like a place where you got food. And then there was some sort of a, a natural someplace that she would go to to get help, like direction 
natural things to try. I don't know, something like, I don't remember now, but there was something in Pasadena. That oh yeah. I think that they did. I think a lot of moms tried that too, like the, you know, the praying with the anointed oil or the, you know, the holistic alternative yeah, medicine approach. Holistic. Yeah. Some, some. Yep. yep absolutely. My mom course. was all into that too. Yeah. The um, natural place you could go and, and they would give you advice on what to do, you know? Well, you know, in the, uh, I was going to tell you in the watchtower, they had a similar thing when, when the people died because they couldn't take blood. They had all these children. And the whole page of the watchtower was all these children. And they said, you know, Jehovah is so happy that they martyred themselves rather than breaking Jehovah's law and taking blood. And they were children. And you exactly. were parents. I mean, where is your heartfelt love? Where is your heart for your damn children that you brought into this world? You're, you could actually sit there, see it's programming, and watch your child die. I, I tell you, I got to say this. I'm surprised two things. One is that you and Angela are even alive. I agree with that. And two, that you're even sane. Because yeah, yeah, all I, that I, toxic yeah. guilt and shame, thinking about, oh, my God, I'm sick, knowing they're going to judge me, knowing you're going to judge yourself, and knowing you can't really help a cold coming on or flu or, you know, tonsillitis or and when well, you're getting sent to school still too so you know it's pretty rampant in school you catch sickness right. almost right when you start almost right. everybody does you well, know it's like it. everybody knows that you go to the store you go to the bathroom and you put your hand on this you put your hand on that that this person just before you was yeah. sneezing their little head off or they had a, a sty in their eye and you know and then you go home the next thing you know you got it right yeah, yeah. that's gonna be my fault no that's natural and but, exactly. you know, my, my mom, I know she would feel bad. Like I did, I'm not doing my job. I got to get these kids more vitamin C. I remember her, her feeding us cod liver oil by the spoonfuls. Castor oh oil. gosh. Why does and, that almost sounds familiar? Oh, God almighty, man. That stuff was gross. That was thick and disgusting. And I we took this st stuff weird stuff. God, what was it called? KM or uh, something yeah. weird. Like you're talking about that we had to take two now that you're yeah. just and i don't even know what it was but something to hopefully build up maybe your immunity right. blah 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 because right. you were you, yeah you weren't taken and you know the big reason you weren't is because of the abuse and the neglects they didn't want you to go into the doctor and saying well how long has this been going on that's one of the first right. questions right, right. <laughs> what are they gonna say that they, they're gonna get in trouble and then so that's a big reason why you're, you're you yeah. know, and, and you know, it can be led. They don't, they talk, the ministers talk to the parents out of it. Right. Going. Lead poisoning in your house or molds or something. Yes. I mean, my dad had lead poisoning from the college and to think that they do not care to have proper ventilation in that building makes me really mad. Yeah. Because that was very much your big dad's time got a permanent neglect. cough because of yeah it. he has a yeah well that was from the the dyes the dyes okay yeah so that was my dad was that, too, that right? was a whole nother issue my dad had a lot he has a lot of coffee when he gets in the cold weather he coughs a whole lot because of the the dyes that were on the presses and those mm. dyes make you um get a cough Dan, Dan uses dyes and what we do for a living and you have to be really careful not to breathe that stuff but they didn't give a care about it so I got a yeah. question. What do you do for like sh strep throat or or something really bad like tonsillitis? Oh, I I have throat. that. I have that. <laughs> do you want me to start? You want me? It's yeah, you want me to start it's down my. Going. It's a quick. You want me to start down stuff. my list? Yeah. Like how what happened and how this oh, is yeah. still yeah. affecting me to this day? So, hey, I, I really like I said I really sat with myself, and we joined at five. I remembered. So what first started me is I started having nightmares. I bet you a lot of others have and did as well. I had uh, two recurring ones, burning alive with fire, going to burn in the lake of fire. And then I always had one where I was being chased, but I couldn't run. Um, and those, there was really scary. And I remember I would, you know, go down to my, my mom's room, but I, there was no comfort there. I could lie next to her bed, no blanket, no pillow. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it started for me. I started having nightmares. And then um, probably about like seven, I started suffering from really, really bad splitting migraines oh. um, all the time. Missed a lot of school. Oh, and, you know, looking back, I know it was just all because of the stress. 
because I thought I was going to die. And, you know, you didn't, you didn't know when, I mean, I grew up, I grew up not thinking I was ever going to even finish high school or go to yeah. college, let alone get married, have kids yeah, that right. you were going to yeah. die anytime. Right. You didn't dream. So that really supports like depression, you know, almost suicidal ideation, right. you know, because why, why live, you know? Right. So it was, it was just horrible. What it, like you said, the, the mental trauma and the, like how, how, what it did to you internally. Right. I'm really realizing it now. So that's how it really started for me. And then I started having stomach issues and, um, I don't, I never got seen. I don't ever remember. And I always have had them. And all of a sudden in 2020, those stomach issues ended up, they got so bad. I ended up in the ER. And of course this is 2020, right? COVID. I can't have anybody with me back there. So, you know, like, I'm like, this is it. I'm going to die. Cause I, <laughs> here's the virus they talked about the, you know, cause it was like either like a virus, global famine, um, you know, like eh, eh, that was going to, or world war three, you know, that was what was going to take us out. It was always that fear. So that definitely, I, I feel like triggered me more than I realized in 2020 thinking back and I had to call my therapist definitely when I was in there alone I was very scared to be alone in there and finally I got diagnosed with diverticulitis um yeah, that too. and I uh ended up like I I got really really sick I had to have a surgery um I ended up having to go back again I had a, got an abscess like six months later I was admitted and then I never got better. And I, and I was on antibiotics and um, pain meds from December till June till I got my surgery a oh, long time. Geez. And they they cut out a bunch of my colon, all that. But then I'm still having issues. And I went and um, I still have it. <laughs> Even after my surgery, I still have diverticulitis. Oh so I still suffer from a lot of stomach issues. Um, I feel like that's where a lot of my anxiety and stress goes because that's one question you know my therapist asked me like where do you feel like that's at mm -hmm. it's always for me really in my stomach and it's in my heart so I have um I deal with uh, really bad heart palpitations um all day every day 24 7 it it's makes fluttering fluttering yeah it's yes bumping. like uh say you got in a car accident and your adrenaline's running that's how I live oh, all the time goodness. It, yeah, it's, and we're working on it. I do something called mind heart coherence, which is kind of helping oh, and like brain thing. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And so to try to get that down. Um, and so that's a, a technique that you can look up um, to try to help when you have that really, because some, some stuff just doesn't help me. The breathing doesn't help, but that does seem to help a little more. I call it breathing into my heart. <laughs> you know, it's kind of what you're doing. Um so that is one that's kind of followed me into my future, something I feel like I suffered with as a kid, never got taken. And I just continued as well to put it off and not take my health seriously till it kind of put me on my bottom. So, uh, yeah, I want to talk about that a minute because, you know, here's the thing. Since we were kind of talk, uh, told to not be sick. And so you're not, if you do get sick, everybody wants to ignore it. And so oh, yeah. you're not going to get a lot of attention for being sick anyway, because you shouldn't be sick because it's a shameful thing. And so therefore we, we are now in our adult years trying to, to not pay attention to our body and what's going on in it. We just, we, we tend to do what we've always done. Ignore, ignore, ignore. It'll go away because you shouldn't yeah. have it anyway. And if you do, it's because you were, you, you know, you sinned or, or you, you know, you've done something wrong and, and you shouldn't be sick. And so you just ignore yourself. So we're out of a touch with our bodies. Um, Absolutely. I'm so disconnected with right. my emotions. Me too. Yes. And it's bad. like my worth, um, yeah. feeling well, worthy of oh, yeah. love, yeah. of happiness, joy, all those things we're 
we're robbed. not we weren't taught to do and it was robbed from us if you did then it was prideful right you know if you were that's it yeah that's yeah so <laughs> it wow. you really weren't supposed to almost be happy it felt like no self-esteem yeah. is a forbidden uh, thought you yeah know, right i got a question so how long were you out before covid came Oh, so I left man when I was 15 and let's see, it's 2024 and that was 2020. So I was, you know, the beginning of my forties there. So see, that I, shows the importance of what you guys are talking about right now. Yeah. Because that reactivated that the subconscious mind and all that guilt you had when that, oh, yeah. came out, it retriggered. That's where it all you started. Know, and I got re-triggered. Relationship. I'm doing something wrong. And she thought she was going to die because yeah. of Herbert W. Armstrong's training. Right. Teaching. Oh, it, it was so bad. It was so intense. Um, I luckily, this is actually a really good one, which I was going to wait, but you know what? It came up. Um, I have this uh, app. It's called Insight Timer. It's wonderful. It, it's free as well called insight timer and it has meditations um the tapping that we were talking about i think you've done the e yep it's you can look that up um and so sometimes what i'll do is i'll search i have something specific so what i did is i searched surgery and there were people telling me you got a great doctor. Your surgery is going to go great. It's going to be so successful. Yeah. And I had to listen to those just over oh, and over to just that. calm myself oh, before yeah. and let myself know I was safe. It was okay. This was needed because it, it was horrible. And then I actually, I got, I was a caregiver and I got injured, um, 924, 2021. I caught a lady in the shower and she slipped and fell. Oh. So I had that going on as well, I had the stomach first and then that happened. Oh. And then I, I couldn't work. So that caused an enormous amount oh. of stress. I didn't know how I was going to provide for me and my daughter. Um, and um, I was still smoking cigarettes on at the time. So they put me on uh, Varenicline to get off. And I ended up going into anaphylactic shock and I had seizures for two days. 